Okay, hi, we're back with our nectarines in a glass bowl. I'm going to, now I'm going to um, probably pretty much leave the bowl alone except for the dark area. So I have some mixtures with uh, dark blue. I've used phthalo, I've used a little bit of medium and yellow, deep, and alizarin crimson. And I came up with something that's kind of brownish green that I think is nice with these, um, because these are so warm, so it's, and green is the complement. Uh, and then uh, for shadow under here and under the glass bowl, I was thinking of using the uh, um, well, let's see here. I was using the phthalo blue or cerulean, whatever you like to try would work, and a little bit of alizarin. So I get a gray, kind of bluish gray purple. It's not really a bright purple, it's uh, a grayish violet blue. And so I don't want my shadow to be, since we're doing something kind of realistic, um, I don't want my shadow to be too, too bright. There are so many ways, but that, that's kind of what will fit in with what we're doing here. So uh, this shadow has a really nice shape. I'm gonna use my 10 or 12 and just bring that shape here. Um, and start with this mixture right here. Let's see how that is. Yeah, that that's gray, and yet it's um, it's not boring. It has some character. So I'm looking at the shape of this shadow, and, and of course the light is behind and to uh, up above and behind the uh, fruit, the nectarine. So we're getting a cast shadow going in the front of the object. So I think that's gonna dry a little lighter than I want it to be, which means I'm gonna add pigment. I'm getting the excess water off my brush and adding some more pigment. So I'm keeping it more transparent and yet not, uh, not too light, not too, not too dark, not somewhere in the light to mid-tone range. As it comes out away from the fruit, the nectarine, that shadow gets lighter. So I did about all I can do while it's still wet, except for this one spot where I wanna deepen that uh, spot where it's underneath the fruit. That's where we need a little bit thicker pigment um, to join in. I'm gonna darken that even more, the one that I did earlier in, step in the first video. And at the back, there's a nice little bit of a light tone coming off of there. So I'm gonna let that alone after I just give it one more stroke here of, a little stroke right here to make it a little more blue. And that is complementing that pretty yellow, orangey yellow that's in this um, shape. Back to my big brush because I'm going into a big area again. And this shadow that comes off this bowl is, uh, is gonna be a little more blue than this one. So it's gonna make, a, now this is a pretty fat brush. This is a number, um, 12. Maybe the 10 would be bigger, better, because the 10 won't give me quite as much, um, it won't be as bulky. But let's grab the 10. Uh, you know, the size of your brush is important when you're creating sh specific shapes. You want to do, I'm not doing a little tiny detail shape, but I'm also not doing like a huge shape. And so I use, I choose my brush accordingly, according to how large or small my shapes are. Okay, so I'm back to getting a pretty nice bluish, bluey violet. And I'm gonna keep it very transparent. And it comes, uh, 
this is where we use the tip of our brush and my brushes are um, they have lost their tips I just ordered some new ones same brushes these Kalinskis I've had them for a few years and they are they've lost their point and I really miss having my point so that I could do um, like if you have a point on a, on a big round brush like this you can you can switch back and forth much more easily from small shapes to big shapes you know from detail like if I want to get in this corner it'd be nice to have a better um, a better point so I have to be very careful when I'm doing it but I do like this color uh, it's I think it's working really nicely this shadowy tone that I found and that just takes a little practice that's something that you can get good at over time is finding that tint or that shadow interesting shadow color that you're looking for and you can see this shadow changes as it goes back it's gonna get lighter it's not as uh, there's not as much pigment on my brush as I go back in that shape and that is also something you need to be looking for as you're painting these sorts of things there's a little pattern on this fabric so uh, sometimes that will create a change in the in the uh, shadow too so um, I can make a few little strokes and and we'll see how it looks later as it dries. I'm going to go to almost straight blue back here. Um, so that shadow has changed quite a bit as it's gone around the form. And that pretty much comes all the way back up here. And we can go right around the edge of the glass bowl here and show, show where that shape is um, so now I'm going to go into the dark background I showed you my mixture um, one of my mixtures has some burnt sienna in it which is burnt sienna and phthalo blue can create a really beautiful um, foresty green is what I think of it as so here's my I'm not going to do the whole background, uh, but I am going to show you what I would, how I would make a big puddle of this dark color that I want to use, and uh, and I'm going to paint up against this dry. It is dry, which is good. I'm going to keep my shape all the way around, and as soon as I get that down, I'm going to stroke it out. So um, when you get a really concentrated pigment like this, sometimes it looks doesn't look like the color. But now that I'm stroking it out on the on the picture plane, it it is starting to look nice and green. And in fact, I think I'll add some red to it because I'd rather have it go a little more into especially um, into like a brownish tone brownish green forest like I said earlier foresty green pigment tone I'm painting just painting negative space right now and keeping a lot of brush uh, a lot of water and a lot of uh, but mostly pigment on my brush right now because I want it to stay thick and I'm working left to right uh, because I like to do that so I don't get my hand into the into the uh, pigment that I've already painted so if I if I had pigment down here it was wet it would be much easier to get that part of my hand uh, sort of can brush up against the uh, the pigment that I laid down so anyway that's what I'm that's what I'm doing I'm right-handed so I'm working left to right so if you were left-handed, you would want to work left to right, uh, right to left, and that would be a great way to keep yourself out of the pigment because the pigment is drying. So I'm just picking up more. This is quite a big 
big amount of pigment on here. Anyway, this might look nice just the way it is, you know, just without finishing it all up. Um, or, you know, there's so many things you can do with a background like this. I could take a wet brush and just wet it out for now. And then if I decide I want to, um, I'll just leave it just like that. You know, sometimes this, or, you know, as soon as you see a really beautiful shape emerge, uh, sometimes it's nice just to leave as is. But if you want the drama of this little curve here, it, then you're going to want to put your, your green there. And that immediately gives you a background. You don't have to come all the way out to the edge of your picture plane and cover every spot. You know, this, this gives the viewers an idea that this is it. Not saying you, you can't do it that way, but you, you uh, don't have to either. So I'll see how this looks, and if I want to add more later, I will. And sometimes it's a good idea to plan a little bit before you get into the painting of this dark background. Say, I don't want to paint the whole thing beforehand, or vice versa. Because it's good to have a plan, and it's good to have enough paint mixed so that you are ready for anything <laughs> at all times. <laughs> um, so there's more for this to do on this painting, but I think we're going to call it a day right now. One thing I will do um, is come across here with just softening that edge slightly that uh, I created over here on this side of the fabric, just because it was a little sharp and harsh. And, uh, and there is actually a shadow under there anyway. Okay, I hope you enjoyed this video, and I hope you really enjoy painting this beautiful still life. Thank you for watching.